Hello everyone and welcome to this week's solution session with Data Terrain. We will be recording this webinar just for your reference if you'd like to refer back to it later. This week we're going to be focusing on an introduction to data load for reporting and we'll be reviewing ETL and ELT and helping you to discern the differences and understand more. I'd just like to give you a little bit of background about Data Terrain. We have been in the business intelligence space for over a decade and we work with customers across the globe, across industries, helping them to resolve any issues they may have in the BI space. So we are partners across many of the large technology firms, Oracle, TIBCO, IBM as examples, and we work across technologies and things that we'll be covering today as well as anything else you may be using for reporting. So please feel free to come to us and let us know what challenges you're facing and we can help you to walk through those. Today we're going to be working with Rama Prakash as he reviews this topic and I'm going to go ahead and give him control so he can take us through these steps. Thank you, Leah. No problem. Go ahead. Let me know if you've got control. If not, oh, there we go. Sounds good. Okay. Good morning, everyone. This is Ram Prakash from Data Terrain. Uh, I have been with uh, Data Terrain for past eight years, and I am into uh, data analytics and data processing. So here I am today. I am for presenting about data loading and ETL. So th these are the contents which I'm going to walk you through uh, the ETL and what is ELT and uh, some of the market players uh, in ETL and a few case studies about what we have handled with our clients. So data loading is a load component of ETL and ELT uh, in which data is stored into a storage system such as cloud data warehouse or else uh, on-premises data warehouse. Data is extracted from an external source and it is transformed and it is then loaded into the target system for data analytics. So uh, this is why uh, uh, we, we are using uh, data loading and uh, it is a part of ETL and ELD process. Uh, uh, Leah, can you move to the next slide? So e ETL is uh, nothing but the short form of extract, transform and load, uh, wherein the three database functions are all together in the same tool. So it's extracting from a data source and uh, transforming it and loading it to a data target. So ETL is an intermediate process uh, in which we are extracting from the OLTP system and transforming it and then loading into an OLAP system for data analytics. Yeah, can you move on to that? So this is the ETL architecture. Here you can see that uh, we are uh, extracting the data from OLTP system and we are uh, doing a transformation in the intermediate part and then we are loading it to an OLAP system and over it uh, we are running the BI tools uh, for uh, taking business decisions. So this is the architecture. So why we need an ETL is uh, since OLTP system is not meant for uh, reporting or data analytics, uh, OLTP system is usually uh, unindexed, normalized, and un unaggregated uh, because uh, indexing will slow down the OLT OLTP processing, like uh, insert of data, uh, building of data. So that's the reason why, when compared to OLAP, OLTP system will have a minimal index, but it's not meant for uh, data analytics. And also, the tables are normalized. Uh, if you even want to query a OLTP system, the query might be a little complex since the tables are normalized. And as you all know that the uh, OLTP system is unaggregated and it be still becomes difficult for the uh, data analytics over OLTP system. So due to which we have to uh, transform our data into an OLAP system, which is properly indexed and denormalized and aggregated so that the query performance, the system performance is better. So due to which uh, we are using an OLAP system here. And here comes the role of ETL tool, which extracts the data from the OLTP, transforms it, and adds indexes, denormalizes, aggregates, and 
it loads into the OLTP system, OLAP system. So you might have a question now that why an ETL tool? Why this can't be done in a uh, uh, traditional way? Like we can do the same thing in the store procedure or a or a Spark programming. But the problem here is like if it is a min minimum number of programs, like 10 programs or 20 programs, it's not going to be a big deal. But whereas if it is more than that, maintenance of the uh, processing, data processing using store procedures is going to be a bit difficult. And also it's going to be very difficult for debugging and further uh, development of the uh, process. So it's going to take a lot of time, consume a lot of uh, resources, and it requires a really skillful resources for uh, ETL process, which has to be done uh, through a programming or a stored procedure. So that's the reason why we are opting for uh, organizations across the world are opting for ETL tools, uh, which is meant for, which has built-in intelligence, which is meant uh, for doing this uh, process in a very uh, effective way. So typical use cases for ETL process can be uh, when an organization is planning to uh, migrate from one system to another system, like a mainframe to a new database system. Uh, it can be used for a migration of data. And in other cases, as I said before, it can be used uh, as a, to create a data warehouse uh, OLAP system. And also it can be used for integration of different uh, heterogeneous systems into a single place. So that, that can also be done. And also uh, it can be used for data cleaning. Uh, since the data is uh, more valuable only when it is uh, quality of the data is good. So we can use ETL tool or ETL process for cleaning data uh, so that it can be used for uh, analysis in a very effective way. So uh, uh, what is ELT? So ELT is another process which is trending in recent years. So it is nothing but the extract, load and transform. Whereas ETL is extract, transform and load. The difference is the transformation takes place at the target location in the ELT. Whereas the transformation takes place in the intermediate layer in the ETL. So, so the process of ELT, ELT is uh, trending in the recent days because of the data size, volume, and the uh, and the features which uh, the cloud infrastructure is providing, which makes is makes ELT possible nowadays. Because the uh, the capability of handling large volumes of data and scaling up when needed, and uh, and performing data analytics over structured and unstructured data is pro provided by this uh, recent development in the uh, cloud infrastructure which makes elt very possible so so now uh, the cloud providers and the P uh, organization which are opting for uh, uh, cloud infrastructure are choosing elt based upon the business requirements if the data volume is more then they are probably going for elt So this is the difference between the ETL and ELT. Uh, in, uh, this, this diagram shows the ELT has an intermediate transformation layer, uh, whereas in ELT, the transformation takes place at the target data or server. So this, uh, next slide. So uh, when, so what, are the possibilities of choosing this uh, whether, whether an organization should choose an ELT or an ETL is different is totally dependent upon the scenario of the business uh, so few points I would like to say are so so when the data volume is very small or moderate uh, the ELT can be uh, used and the e e ELT is ETL can be used sorry uh, ELT is uh, used um, mostly for a uh, data volume huge data volume so so ELT is for processing huge data sizes so and ETL is mostly on premises data warehouse structure whereas uh, ELT is a uh, cloud infrastructure supported and it also supports uh, unstructured data 
since uh, etl is on premises uh, so the cost is little bit higher whereas uh, elt uh, the cost is low because uh, the cloud providers are uh, providing us uh, providing a process uh, in which uh, uh, they are requesting only for pay for what we are using so since due to that the cost becomes little lesser when compared to the on premises so these are few prominent etl elt tools uh, uh, in the market there are a lot of tools but i i just listed few of them so etl in etl side it's informatica the top player and the saps uh, data integrator I, ibm's data stage talent and the in the etl part it's odi it's plenty stitch and fitran so these are the tools which are uh, currently in the market so i would just explain you some couple of tools uh, top tools in the market so so this is uh, about informatica uh, this was founded in 1993 uh, and it's an etl tool it follows an etl process uh, extract transform and load so integration in informatica is very uh, uh, it's very act good actually because since the tool is an old player so the integration they have all kinds of integration mostly all kinds of integration to different kinds of applications and databases so integration is very very uh, simple and easy in uh, informatica and uh, the tool is very high performing tool and it has good optimizing uh, capabilities uh, and it supports uh, supports uh, various databases and data types uh, and the maintenance of this tool is very uh, user friendly and the error handling capability is very good since uh, because uh, it has a centralized error monitoring system in which we can very well easily navigate and backtrack the issues where it exactly it's coming from and also it's very intelligent tool where it exactly pinpoints uh, the error uh, location where we can just go and fix it and the training and you training and user friendly to developers because it doesn't require much uh, skillful developers uh, just a basic sql knowledge would be enough to create a data uh, workflow in the informatica and it also has software as a service cloud presence so so it's cost effective as well and to explain about the next tool uh, it's odi oracle data integrator uh, the so oracle purchased synopsis in 2016 and rebranded it to odi and then they also merged their own data warehousing tool in 2010 so this is an elt tool uh, whereas informatica was an etl so this is an extract load and transform tool uh, here integration is good but compared to informatica it supports majority of the oracle based applications and databases whereas informatica was providing uh, uh, out of box services for most of the applications around the globe mm, but here it provides the uh, integration for most of the oracle based applications and it's an high performing tool maintenance is very simple and easy mm, built in intelligence it is a very intelligent tool uh, and training and user friendly and also it is in cloud presence so i would explain you couple of use cases uh, what we have handled for recently for our clients so here uh, one of our client had nearly 120 stored procedures which were which was hard for them to support and maintain so that 120 stored procedures was uh, uh, was sto stored in a oracle database and uh, they were uh, were having a very hard time for maintaining the system so they we had them converted all the 120 stored procedures into an ol ap system using the informatica tool so the previously they the stored procedure usually runs more like 5 hours every day every night uh, for extracting and transforming and loading the data so sometimes it even takes them more than 10 hours and it overlaps the working hours which caused them a lot of issues previously and even they had difficulties for developing the uh, process because they required a really skillful uh, sql developer pl sql developer uh, full time dedicated 
for the process to develop and maintain the system so it was really they were got really stuck up and then we converted them the informatic using informatica and loaded them to an olap system then the then it the the, the informatica runtime was really like 60% lesser it just took 2 hours for them every day from 12 am to 2 am it just took 2 hours to load and uh, the solution and the feedback was like the 60% uh, lesser runtime and they had a very maintenance and development friendly environment uh, the use case to be the creating a data store um, one of our client was directly querying the oltp system um, in which the sql was very complex and it was very slow so they used to schedule it and this have the results very late uh, due to which we uh, we converted like nearly 220 uh, normalized table into denormalized tables the source system was a people soft student administration system uh, we used a etl uh, oracle oda tool and we uh, extracted and loaded and transformed the data uh, into the o- oda system and denormalized the table Uh, and aggregated as needed and uh, and it provided them a very clean data store uh, with norm denormalized table which made them uh, very comfortable and very uh, effective in uh, reporting and uh, analyzing the data and querying the data from the ods the data store <clears throat> so the conclusion is uh, etl and elt is very necessary for an organization which is planning for an or data analytics for a better business decisions so etl and elt process may lead in great reduction of maintenance and cost for the organization if it is being used in very in a intelligent way and we data terrain has an team of experts uh, to help and maintain the data processing from end to end thank you all for your time and if you have any questions you can ping in the uh, meeting or else uh, we will connect you offline thank you yeah. No no worries thank you so much so uh, we are recording this session um and I'm going to uh, pause our recording um at the end of our presentation here so we can take any questions you might have but I'd also like to let you know that the core of our business is around reporting so whether that is in a migration process a uh, management of the environment itself or in new development our experts have been working on this for over a decade and that is all that we do so we're certainly available and have experts of all varieties to assist you. I do want to make sure that you have the opportunity to ask any questions you might have today. So I'm going to pause the recording um, and thank those who are watching that way. If you have any questions, feel feel free to um unmute your microphone or send via chat, whichever you prefer. <clears throat>